All right, everyone. Hi, welcome back to fall 2020 at UCR. You guys are at the first general meeting of SciKai, the International Honor Society at UCR. Welcome, I'm so glad you guys made it. Um, just a quick reminder for the few of you who have just arrived, please fill out the form in the chat because that's how we take your attendance. And I will explain why that is so important later in the slides. But first I wanna introduce you to our board. Um, we have me, Darian, who's the president. We have Jesus, our VP. Jesus. So. Jesus, our VP. We have um, Amy as our secretary. And then Corinne as our treasurer. Hello. Hallie, our historian. Hello. And then we have two directors of events, Jessica. Hi. And Jenna. Hello. The seven of us will be attending most meetings. We're all here for any of you. If you guys see us in your classes, say hi. We are not just for Psychi, we're kind of here for all of psychology. So if you see us and you have questions, we're aboard and we're here to help no matter where we are. Um, we also have Kalina, our faculty advisor here. Kalina, hi, everybody. Yeah, hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the fall quarter. It's an unusual one, so let's make the best of it. Kalina has been our faculty advisor for, I think, two years right now, Kalina. Since, yeah, since 2019. Yeah. Perfect. So um, if you guys have any questions, if you guys need like any faculty advice, Kalina is always here to help us. Um, she helps us coordinate anything that is like on campus and she is our main support when it comes to communicating with faculty, getting help from Psychi, I mean, like Psychi International grants and all of that jazz. Kalina's our main person here. So thank you, Kalina. Um, do you want to say anything real quick? Um, no, just um, please do feel free to reach out. I actually, um, I had, <clears throat> I teach two classes this quarter. I had a one, my 161 socio emotional development and in my office hours, a student came and said, um, I remember something that you said at Psychi meeting, which is that you should come to office hours of, of faculty. And so that was, uh, I was happy to hear that she took that to heart and came to office hours. But in general, do please feel free to reach out. If you don't hear right away, feel free to always bounce the email back to me. Um, I'm happy to answer questions, work with all of you um, throughout this quarter and beyond. And <clears throat> You know, if, if you have suggestions or ideas or if you want to communicate with other faculty or, you know, <clears throat> involve them in programming events, I'm also happy to act as a liaison with some of the other faculty and labs and things like that. So um, don't hesitate to, to reach out. Um, I have a lab here, as you can see um, in, the, uh, in the PowerPoint, um, the director of the Kids Intera Interaction or Development Lab, the KIND Lab. Um, we use fMRI, brain imaging, physiology, behavioral observations to look at emotion development in kids. We look at typical development. We look at kids with pediatric anxiety, kids with aggressive conduct problems. Um, we look at how their brains develop. Um, more recently, we've been looking at um, how experiences of racism affect uh, brain circuitry involved in fear and empathy and other things. So. Um, if you are interested in, in joining the lab, um, also reach out. Um, you can take a look at our webpage. You can um, apply through my lab manager. Her name is Sandy. Um, we're always looking to uh, increase our lab. So looking forward to working with everybody. Thank you, Kalina. It was really good to see you. Um, and like she said, feel free to email her. She is just as much a part of Psychi and how to help you as everyone else on the board. So um, if you have any questions for her, she's absolutely available. Um, our next Psychi chapter mentor, she is relatively new to the front facing of the team. Um, Sarah Cooney is a psychology academic advisor. She unfortunately couldn't be here today, but um, she is the one who helps us process all the GPAs to make sure that like Everyone um, who applies to Psychi um, actually qualifies to be in an honor society um, and all of that. And Sarah um, 
answers a lot of questions for us. And so as we go through the application process and you guys are wondering, did I make meet unit levels or did I make the like GPA requirement? Sarah Cooney is kind of the person that we go to for that. Um, and so she is lovely and wonderful. And like um, Kalina, she is just as much part of the team as the board. And so if you guys have any questions regarding that, you can absolutely email Sarah as well. Um, and then and the most recent newest member is we have a helped helped me help helped me officer and it's Bandigi. Um, Bandigi, do you want to say hi? Hi, hi guys. My name is Bandigi. Um, as Darren introduced me, I am the help help me officer. Um, so this is actually the first year I think that we are having this position. So basically my main like job is just to like compile and maintain a list of the mental health resources. So in the document um, on the slides, I basically got resources from off campus and like the Riverside area, but like I also listed some on-campus resources for you guys to use. If you guys have any questions or need more information, feel free to email me. My email's on the slide, but I'm excited to work with you guys this year, so, yeah. Thank you. So um, we will be sending out these slides and in these slides, there's a resource list right here. There's a link so you can look at this document as she updates it. And if you guys have any questions about it, you can absolutely um, email Saikai at UCR, Bandigi herself or anything related. Um, she is, uh, she reached out to us to ask to be this position. So she is absolutely an avid supporter of helping everyone here with, you know, resources for Riverside County or whatever county you're in. Um, some examples are Helpline, which is the local suicide crisis hotline, 211, which I think like 98% 98 of counties in America have a 211. And so even if you're not technically in Riverside County, you can just call 211 and it'll be sent to wherever you are. Um, and they are kind of like old school operator. They have like large resources or like large um, databases of social networking or social needs. So like food pantries, um, oh my gosh, food pantries, like homeless shelters, mental health resources, they kind of have it all. And most two and ones are 24 seven. So that's an example of like your local um, countywide resources. And then CAPS, which is on uh, at UCR and the well and certain things that they provide as well while we are um, remote. So let Bundigi know if you guys need any help. So to the main reason that a lot of you guys probably attended now that you have met all of us on the board um, is what is Saikai and why do you guys keep getting all the emails about like you've qualified for GPA? So um, Saikai is an honor society. So we're not a fraternity or sorority, which is a little deceiving because of the name, but um, we are GPA requirement for membership. So you have to be in, an, in the honor roll, GPA wise, to become a member. And we are an organization usually made up of members, chapters, and um, that exist to recognize scholastic achievement, encourage leadership, research, creativity, um, and we're psychology based. So across the world, because it's an international society, there are Psychi chapters at many universities. And so once you become a member, um, you are a member for life. Um, and so say the, as an example, um, the president from the 2018 to 2019 um, school year is now the president at his college where he goes to grad school because he's a Saikai member for life. And so he, there's a lot of opportunities that Saikai can offer you because we're an honor society. And it also looks really good on a CV um, that you wouldn't have opportunity for if you guys weren't members. So um, the organization as a whole was founded in 1929. It's the largest student psych psychological organization um, with more than three quarters of a million members across you know, the whole world. And um, on UCR, we're the most prominent psychology organization. We work very hand in hand with the psych department. Um, we are well established. We do lots of events. We do most of the events that you see um, 
that are coordinated with the psychology department, which we will talk about later. But yeah, that's kind of like a brief who is Psychi and things like that. So who can participate? So there's two types of members, right? So everyone's Psychi, whether you're trying to join or you are already a member. So if you're already a member, you've gone through the full application process um, and you are, you know, you have a 3.0 psych GPA, you have a 3.3 overall GPA, you're at least a second year above it in psychology, either major or minor, and um, you've paid your fees and you've filled out the full application. Give me one second. My cat is literally body slamming the door to get in. So one moment. <laughs> apologies if you could hear him. Um, so membership, the, the difference in the primary benefit of being a member versus um, a non-member. So wait, wait, didn't explain. A prospective member is anyone who's in psychology, any GPA, any year, your pending applications, whatever, as long as you are like attending events, but you're not technically a member, you're a prospective member. And you can be a prospective member eternally because maybe you don't make the GPA requirements, um, but there's you can still come to all of our events, which are just beneficial to psychology students. And since we are the primary psych association on campus, we kind of we wanted to make sure that all psychology students were at least getting some benefit of what we do rather than just members. But there is a benefit and there's more things that we provide to members than prospective members. So we wanna make sure that there's still that distinction. Um, benefits to membership. So this is the difference between being a prospective member to someone who's paid their full fees and like gone through the whole application process. So if you are a member, you can vote in elections and you can become an officer. Um, only as a member can you add it to your CV because that means you um, qualified for the actually being a part of the um, organization and then it is allowed to be on your CV. Um, we have specific undergraduate research journals and so you can become published in a journal because we have access to sci-fi journals. Um, again, membership is lifelong. So when you go to another college, you are a member there as well, and then you get to reap all the benefits and you don't have to pay the, you know, um, fee again to become a member there. Um, we have links to other universities. So as an example, say like I for grad school, lofty dreams, want to go to UCI. Um, they have a Psychi at UCI. So I am able to email them. If you are interested in that, just let us know. And we can connect you with a Psychi at another university. So you can start talking to professors, getting to know other grad students, and already getting your foot in the door for um, attending or applying to that university, which as you guys know, grad schools is like a one-on-one -on -one mentorship. So getting to know um, the professors and people early before you even start applying is extremely helpful. And as a Psychi member, you have a foot in the door to become, to do that. Um, we have like Psychi awards and um, grants and scholarships for like the conferences and stuff like that. Um, it's a little bit different because everything's online right now, but even if you guys are gonna be here next year, um, that all still applies to you as well. And then for us at this specific UCR chapter, we have GRE, de GRE discounts. We have um, specific member events for those who are active members. Um, we have quarterly raffle prizes. We have mental health resources. Um, and then we have end of the year graduation regalia. And um, for prospective members, there are there is something called the freshman lay member program. And we are going to be having an info session about that on Thursday, right? Thursday, October 15, uh, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. PST. Please, we'll send out an email again about that, but um, this is a special like mentorship program for freshmen um, who 
you know, you can't technically become a member yet, but you are really excited about Psychi and you want to become a member. I think about half of our board was part of the freshman lay member program. So um, it's a really good way to get connected and to just feel like you're part of a team and a family um, at Psychi. So please come to the info, info session. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? I feel like I should pause for a second. I just don't want to zoom through or be behind on time or anything like that. I can't see anybody, so either unmute yourself or put it in the chat, but I'm going to just keep going unless someone has something to say. So this is the reason that signing into events is important because um, all of these benefits, some of them are determinant upon how active you are in this chapter. And so you signing into events um, is how we find that out. Isn't this the first info session? This is the info session for who Psychi is and um, the first general meeting, just so you can get to know us as a whole. The info session on Thursday is specifically for the freshman lay member program. So that's for freshmen only. And it's to understand what that program is, kind of, you know, getting some general interest in it and ask questions about that. But where you're at right now, that's this is the info session on who Psychi is and why. Um, being a part of our community is valuable and important. Transfer students, we um, are working on something like that. We have um, a potential like transfer info session. Um, we just need to figure out how many students are transfer students. Um, me, myself, I came in as a transfer student last year. So I totally understand the um, nerves of just like, how do I get started? Um, so if you want to email UCR, psychi at gmail.com, then we can um, find an event or meet specifically with you and we can coordinate you with um, and get you some just like general information. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so these membership benefits apply to people who are active. So active membership is five points, so five events. As a whole, this quarter alone, we have about 25 events scheduled. So going to being at minimum bronze active membership is going to a fifth of them. Um, and you are already here, so you already have one point. And then right after this, we're gonna be doing a social networking hangout session. And if you go to that, then you have two points. And so we made the threshold a little low, um, but we want to encourage students to come to things. And so by doing that, we have more um, benefits and stuff like that to you, the more you attend. Um, so for members, bronze means that we have a special like raffle and just like hey, thank you for being active in a member event in week nine. And then for prospective members, we have um, merch on Redbubble, which we will be dropping soon. And you guys will have discounts to that. Um, and so it'll just be slightly cheaper product for you. Um, silver means that you attend nine events. And this is both the like, uh, active membership applies to both prospective and members, prospective members and members. So if you make silver, then we have, you still get to attend the week nine event. Then we offer GRE discounts and then merge discounts to silver members. And then prospective members also get a GRE discount and merge discounts still. So the addition is primarily the GRE discounts. So for gold status, so I gotta move all my stuff is both the um, perspective and uh, members have the GRE discounts, merch discounts. There's gonna be like special recognition on our social media and emails. And then we have like a grad student networking that's TBD. And then for members only is the week nine event. So the week nine event for the raffle, the um, gift cards and just kind of like a special event is for members only. Um, unfortunately, no prospective members are allowed to attend because we want to make sure and thank people who are have paid the fees, are full members, and um, are getting the recognition that they deserve for being a part of our team. 
Um, does anyone have any questions? I feel like I only explained it semi well. Crystal, how do you check how many points you have? So um, us as a board, we will be tallying, that's what, through that Google form. If you are curious at where you're at, please just email us and we will let you know. Um, we're not gonna send out some like mass email saying like, here's all the members and here's where they're at. But if you personally are curious, just let us know. And um, if you qualify for certain events based on your membership, we will email you being like, hey, you have officially made it to you know silver membership level. You have been entered into the raffle of getting a GRE discount or um, stuff like that. Does that make sense? Does anyone else have any questions? So the points refresh each quarter and you do, um, you, yeah, you earn points by attending meetings. So the difference is if you're not a member yet, then you would qualify for the prospective member benefits of everything here. So that would be the merch discounts and the GRE discounts. And then if you're a gold member, then the social networking with grad students. And each quarter, all of this will start over from scratch. An important distinction is people who are um, active members can vote in the winter elections. So if you guys maybe can't attend this quarter, but next quarter you want to um, be a part of the elections and actually vote, then you have to be an active member in winter quarter. And so that means just five minimum and you have to be a member. Any other questions? Um, if you, yes, so we have membership statuses. Someone asked if they are like a gold or a um, silver member. Um, can they put that on their resume or like, would it be irrelevant? You can put it on your CV, but there would be like, um, I would suggest putting like a, what that means. And often what you can do is just listing some events that you attended or that you contributed to. That's a good way to show that you were an extremely active member um, without saying like, I was a silver member, even because that might not mean something to someone reading your CV, but saying I attended like RA, um, you know, research assisting workshops, um, LinkedIn, CV workshops, and um, I helped the community in XYZ way through Psychi. All of those things count as like contributing to silver or gold status, but they look better on CVs. Grad networking means that there will be an event with grad students where you, um, we will have like specific questions for them that, um, or that you can ask them, you know, trying to get into their, it's like a smaller event where you can talk to grad students to try to get into their labs, to ask them personal questions, to figure out, you know, um, have one-on-one -on -one conversation with like, how did you get into grad school? What made you decide what you want to do and all of that? Um, it's a more intimate event in order to um, help you navigate whether you want to go to grad school or not. So you are a member no matter what, if you've gone through the full um, application process. Dulce asked, um, so you're not a member until you've reached a specific status, even if you've paid the fee. If you've paid the fee, you're a member no matter what. But so that means you can put it on your, um, you can put it on your CV and you have options to, let me go back. You have options to all of this except for some of these chapter specific ones. So these chapter specific ones have to do with the membership statuses. If you are a bronze, silver, or gold, you are you know, more likely to get this or more discounts. Um, but if you are just, you paid your full application, you've done the whole thing, you paid your fees and you attend no events, you're still a member. Um, and you can put that on your CV, but you don't get all the other benefits of being part of this chapter. Is there any more questions before I move on? 
Awesome. Interrupt me if you have any more. So membership eligibility, which is just what's the process? And it's confusing. So if you guys need to ask more questions, we totally understand. It like had to be drilled into my brain and I'm the president. So I can understand if you guys are confused too. So at minimum, this includes transfer students. You have to have a major or minor in psychology. You have to have completed a total of 14 psych units at UCR. So as a transfer student, I came in with like all of my GE done or my general education done. And like I had taken several classes, none of that counts. When you come to UCR, it's all zero. So you have to take at least 14 units worth of UCR credits. And then, um, dun, 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 dun. yes, transfers, yeah, your transfer classes don't count. And then you have to complete a total of 18 units, either breath or psych to um, apply. And then you have to have an overall GPA of 3.3 and a major GPA of 3.0. So for the 18 units, those 14 psych units can count towards that. You just need 18 units in general, um, but 14 of them have to be psych units. Does anyone have any questions on this before I move on? Yes, each, at, each quarter a new application opens. So all of you guys who meet the GPA requirement got that like, hey, congratulations, you're welcome to join Saikai. Um, if you are a member or you are not a member, you've been it with Saikai your whole UCR career or not, you will get that email every quarter because we don't um, specify who's member or not. I send that email draft to Sarah Cooney. She finds the cut and then everyone gets it and doesn't. If you took AP Psych in high school and your application you took Psych, should we change it? Um, if your AP Psych counts towards, yes. Okay, Sarah, that's a great question. So I'm pretty sure, I would have to ask to make sure, but I'm like 80% sure that anything that you took in high school, even though it transferred to UCR, that whole class would be counted as a transfer class. So maybe UCR as a whole counts it, but um, Saikai wouldn't. That would be counted like you transferred with that unit. So you would have to do the full 14 at UCR, taken at UCR. No worries. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Okay, we will move on. So the application process is three parts. So right now we have the first part, which is filling out the national online application, joining us on Highlander link, and then we have a local chapter application. Those three parts are due at the end of this month at like 11.59. Once we see um, I find it, I make an Excel and I see who filled out all three. And then I send those students to Sarah Cooney and she checks whether you actually fit the GPA and the unit requirement. Then once we get that back, I accept all those people on the Psychi International and then you can pay your fee. So if you filled out the first three parts and say you didn't qualify because of some miscommunication on understanding degree audit or whatever, that happened to me my first quarter. Um, you will have to do um, just the fill out local chapter application in the next quarter. But at that point, you are still not a member. If you finish just this three, but you don't actually pay your fees, you're not a member yet. So if you do finish all these and you get the email saying, hey, congratulations, here's the next part, you can pay us and you pay the fees, then you are a member. And then we have approved inductions after that. And I think this quarter, we're gonna have them at the end around the first week of December. Um, inductions is just kind of like a, a celebration of, hey, like 
congratulations. You are a member of an honor society and we wanna honor you and celebrate you. Um, how long after we applied, did we find out if we became a member? So um, usually this process takes a week to, or like a few days for us to tally all of this and then be able to send this. So if by November 20th, you haven't paid your fees, you're not a member. If by November 20th, you have paid your fees, you will find out within a day or two of whether you're an official member or not, and that will all be emailed. Um, and then we'll um, send you the invite for the inductions probably a couple weeks before they actually happen. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have a question on the application process? Yes, if you miss the deadline for the fees, you have to reapply next quarter. Now, a few people in summer um, because of COVID are having issues paying. And so if you wanna email us before the deadline saying, hey, here's when I think I will be able to pay or something like that, then we can extend it. But if you don't let us know before the deadline, then you'll just have to reapply the next quarter. We have another question. Perfect. Wow, okay, well, we're nearly done. I talk surprisingly fast. Okay, so some events that we are having this quarter, like I said, there's gonna be about 25. Um, next general meeting is on week four, Monday, same time. And we're gonna be talking about how to become a research assistant. Um, and kind of what your thought process should be, why it's important um, and necessary steps and like benefits for how to do that at UCR. And then also while online, because it's even harder now that you can't actually go into or like run into a grad student or a faculty member and just like drop by their office. Um, you kind of have to like reach out and find out when their offices are, office hours are. Um, so we're going to be talking about what that means, how to do that. Um, and then we'll probably have a grad student come and talk to us, talk to you, you know, if you need any advice as well. Um, we will have like grad student panels um, as well. So like the other two general meetings will be grad students coming and sharing their experience, um, talking about um, taking the GRE, applying to grad school, um, things like that. We have... Um, we'll be having a CV workshop this quarter on a Thursday. We're going to be doing another lab fair this year, and it is going to be online. That won't be until like week seven. So we'll be giving information about that in like November. We have um, fundraisers and socials. And um, if you guys want to attend, just like after this meeting, we're having a social. We have an art contest. So a lot of our merch is online on Redbubble. And so all of us as um, board members have like contributed to it, but obviously we aren't the only artists in this group. And so if um, you guys want to promote your art and sell it and also donate to Saikai in the same way, we're gonna have to be having an art contest for um, merch that you can put on our Redbubble. And then we also have the freshman lay member program and the info met night is at 6.30. I forgot to change that time. And then we have weekly office hours. So um, every Tuesday from four to 5 p.m. on Discord, um, I'll be hanging out and you can ask me anything. Um, and then we will be having like a community chapter challenge for like how to help the community. And that will be kind of our community outreach or like our charity work this quarter. Um, we have a few other things planned. This is just a really quick list. But if for every one of these that you attend, you get a participation point. So that goes towards your active membership. And like I said, we have about 25 events happening this quarter. And so to be just the basic bronze, you have to go to a fifth of them. Um, someone asked if we are unable to attend meetings due to work schedule conflicts, will we be given the access? Yes. So, um, these, this recording and these slides will be sent out to everyone on our email list. 
So if you guys want to be on our email list, um, join us on Highlander link and then fill out, you know, some of the basic application and we'll add you. Um, if you have to miss something, then um, let you don't have to let us know um, if like, okay, I can do this. As an example, we had a, we have a student who, because they moved back home, are in like a 12 hour difference time zone. And so they emailed us saying like, hey, your 5 p.m. events are like four in the morning for me. Um, can I still be an active member even though I can't really attend anything? And so I worked out, we worked out like a special, um, a special coordination or like we worked out with a special deal with him because he couldn't attend. And we are more than willing to do that. We just need to um, know ahead of time what your needs are so that way we can better accommodate you. If you email us after the fact saying, hey, I couldn't attend because I worked, hopefully we'll see you at the next event. Um, updates, if you guys don't have issues with looking at your email on a regular basis or anything like that, please join us on Discord. You can always email UCR at SciKai. We have an Instagram that we post all of our events on. And then we also have a website if you guys have any questions there as well. Um, yes, sorry, give me a second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we're almost done. So our last slide is the next couple of weeks. So at, because it's Monday, we have a few things happening this week. So we have our um, freshman lay member program, Info Night, which is, again, the times are wrong. That's my apologies. It's 6.30 to 7.30, right, Jenna? Yeah, 6.30 to 7.30 this Thursday. Yep, I will correct that in the slides before I send it out. Um, please join us on Discord for the office hours from 4 to 5 p.m. tomorrow. Um, and then we have a fundraiser coming soon. I think we were working out some details, but we will provide that in, I, in one of these event update places. So if you guys are ever like, is there something happening in Psychi today? Then you can just go to any of this and we will let you know. Um, next week, the art merch contest opens. It's going to be open for, I think, like three or four weeks. Um, so you guys can spend time working on some art. We would love to sell what you are creating. And it would be a wonderful way to help Saikai in general, because we need to raise money. All of the, you know, regalia and gift cards and all of that comes from a lot of our fundraising. And it's been, it's going to be difficult to do that when we're all remote. And so um, you guys purchasing our merch and putting your art on it helps us. And then we have office hours again. And then lastly, again, our general meetings are every two weeks. So two, four, six, eight, and next week or week four next general meeting on October 26th will be how to become a research assistant. So that concludes our presentation. Other than, I very much forgot this. Um, we, this is for members only. We have, as you guys might have seen in the email, um, we updated our chapter constitution, which was a ton of work, but very necessary. Um, and we need you guys to vote on it. We have to have two thirds of the members, which ironically, like perfectly, we have about a hundred members. So we need 66 people to vote. And we have about 30 right now. So if you haven't voted on this, I know it's annoying, but we need it to happen. I will constantly remind people until it happens. So um, please vote. And then that way we can stop pestering people about it. And then we can actually like institute it. So yeah. And then we will have a social networking in a minute. Um, I ended a little early, but does anyone have any questions, concerns, any curiosity? Really at this point, we're willing to answer any question.
Cool. Um, I'm really happy to see so many people here. Um, we're really grateful. Does Do you guys feel like we are beneficial? Do many of you guys want to like, do you guys see the value of becoming a Psychi member? I feel like the professors, well, this is really hard to do on Zoom. <laughs> no one's responding. Um, yeah, please feel free to give us feedback. Um, just a suggestion, but maybe sh the members should say something. Say it again? Maybe the members should say um, what they like about Sankai. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, please. If you guys are like a member who's returning, um, please share anything that you love about Psyche, you know, something that you've learned or anything like that. We would love to hear from you. That's a great suggestion. I can share something. Um, so I just became a member, I think, this past winter quarter. And honestly, it's like so helpful because like literally like everyone is a psych major or like almost everyone is a psych major. So it's like you see them in classes or like they have um, similar experience experiences and like maybe they have taken classes like upper divs that you haven't yet. So it's like, I don't know, it's really cool. And then also it has a lot of really great resources. Like if it wasn't for Psychi, like honestly, like I don't think I would have joined a research lab or like I would have thought about it and like never actually done it. But because like Psychi like really um, emphasizes on research labs, like they even have a master doc with everything. Like for, and it's like, I don't, I don't know, it's like really helpful. So I'm really grateful. But yeah, that's my experience. Thank you, Jackie. Jackie also helped us um, with our psych last year. And honestly, our psych is a huge opportunity for volunteers. Um, you would need to be an active member, a prospective member to coordinate with that. But as an example, um, professors come to me as the president being like, hey, I know this person or like, here's some people in my lab. Who do you recommend? Um, like, who do you know is like a good student? And I honestly was like, oh, I know this person, this person, this person, because they all helped with our psych last year and they were consistent. They were on top of their things and they did. And our psych was a ton of work. And so I, I was easily able to recommend students because I knew how well they worked and how hard they worked helping us with our psych. So that's another benefit to um, being an active member is I get asked, you know, us as a board and when I'm in classes or I'm talking to a professor, like they ask opinions about students that I know. Um, and the more we see you, the more active member you are, the more able we are to recommend you for things. Does anyone else want to share? I'll go. Um, I don't remember when I joined, honestly. <laughs> um, I'm a transfer student, so uh, I wanted to join the club or an organization because I knew it was going to be kind of hard. Um, and I really enjoy being a part of Psych High. And um, when I have my psych classes, uh, sometimes I'm speaking to other students and they're asking about how they want to apply for graduate school. And I'll, I let them know to check out Psych High because we have so many resources that are really helpful and that they should check it out to see if they can um, maybe make some connections to become a research assistant because that's really very important for graduate school. So um, a lot of times I'm just like, hey, come to Psychi. Yeah. Yeah, I felt very similar. I felt when I arrived here as a transfer student last year, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so behind. All these other students have probably already been RA since they were freshmen. How do I do this? And if it weren't for Psychi, I would not have gotten into a lab as fast as I did um, or like have figured anything out. So I am very grateful for being a part of Psychi so that I could get in a research lab to, you know, better my, res my CV before applying to grad school. Does anyone else want to share? Um, as for me, 
I came in as a freshman lay member, and I think that was probably the best experience that I've had here because if it weren't for that, I don't think I would have found my home away from home early on, and I'm eternally grateful for it. So I hope um, if any freshmen are here, I hope you do apply for the freshman lay member program. Again, our info session is this Thursday from 6.30 to 7.30, and the Zoom meeting information is on our Instagram. Sai underscore Kai underscore UCR. Thank you. Thanks, Jenna. Does anyone else want to share? We have a few more minutes. I can share. Um, so 